So, uh, good evening, everyone. Presumably, I'm live now, and presumably, you can hear me. Um, very excited to be part of this virtual conference and actually give the first keynote from my uh, bedroom that I've ever given. Um, so, I really hope that uh, that you can all hear me. Uh, and very, very excited to be back at the Entrepreneurship Avenue after attending the event six years ago as a participant, uh, coming back today as a speaker to talk to you about uh, entrepreneur equals founder, question mark. And uh, I'd like to start with a, with a couple of questions. I would like to start uh, with the question of why. So why are you all here? That, that sounds like a big question, but why are you all attending an entrepreneurship event. I think uh, some part of me is, is right to assume that you're drawn to entrepreneurship. If you're an entrepreneur, you're drawn to being a founder. But what does that actually mean? And do we all have the same picture in our mind when we talk about these terms? I feel in groups like these, there's a specific connotation of what it might mean to be an entrepreneur and to be a founder. So six years ago or seven years ago, I decided for myself um, what it meant to be an entrepreneur and what I wanted to do with my, with my professional life. And I would like to start with sharing that and then sort of elaborating on further. <clears throat> so personally, I am where I am uh, and therefore also here today because I want to solve meaningful problems at global scale through companies I either own or operate. So does that make me an entrepreneur? Does that make me a founder? What is the difference anyway? So when looking at some of these definitions, sometimes I start by going to the dictionary uh, and then taking it from there. So when I did some research on what is an entrepreneur, what I found was basically an explanation saying an entrepreneur is a person who sets up a business or businesses taking on financial risks in the hope of profit. A founder, on the other hand, is a person who founds a school, a college, an organization, or anything else. So basically, at first sight, it looks like both of them refer to the person who actually starts an organization, the entrepreneur being the person starting a business. So as a founder, you could also start a football club. But uh, what about entrepreneurship? We're at the entrepreneurship avenue, right? Um, entrepreneurship is the state of being an entrepreneur or the activities associated with being an entrepreneur. And I think this second part of the sentence really opens up the conversation for the idea that I would like to leave with you today. What are these activities that are associated with being an entrepreneur and can all of them only be done by the founder of an organization? Well, if you think about it, uh, when you want to start a, start a business, when you want to become an entrepreneur, first and foremost, you need to do a lot of things, right? This is the slide that is the, the fullest of what I want to present to you. Uh, and it is for a good reason, because you just have so many things to take care of. When you get started, you first need to find a problem you're really burning to solve. Then you need to find your co-founders. You need to set up a company. You need to build a prototype. You need to iterate. You need to find product market fit. You need to pilot the fundraising. And should you basically find product market fit, then you're involved in scaling up your company. You need to own the shareholder relations. You need to define the vision and the strategy for your company. You need to define what leadership and culture means in your business. And also, you need to manage your business. So basically, I could go on and on of what you need to do uh, as a founder, as an entrepreneur. Um, but let me just say it's quite a lot. And as if that were not enough, you need to be pretty damn good at these things in order for your company to succeed. You need to honor the 5% rule. So from 100 people, you have to be in the top five in a specific skill to be good enough to deliver sustainable results. And if, if you think about the Olympics, if you think about runners, if you're in, in, in that kind of group here, if you're within the top, top people in an Olympic final, then you can, can be sure that you're quite good at a skill. But don't confuse that to say that you personally need to be good at everything. You actually cannot be top 5% in the world in more than a handful of skills. So you need to know yourself, complement yourself, and you need to orchestrate the success. So what I think about when, when I talk to a lot of people in the, in the entrepreneurship space is that the definition of a founder is sometimes more uh, something like this, a superhuman who's great at everything and available 24 seven for the company. 
but actually more rationally, let me break it down and offer an alternative suggestion. I would say, based on the skills that we've outlined, a founder is someone who is able to assemble and lead a team that is able to consistently be in the top 5% in the world across the most important entrepreneurial activities. So if you think about that big sort of matrix that I showed before with all the skills that it takes, if you can put together the team that will consistently be in the top 5% across all or most of those skills, then you have a chance to really make an impact. In that context, I would like to offer the perspective of entrepreneurship actually being a profession, a profession of practicing and applying entrepreneurial qualities that ultimately culminates in being a founder. So what that means is that an entrepreneur is a professional in entrepreneurial activities, who's either currently a founder or developing and obtaining entrepreneurial skills to become a founder in a non-founder role or someone who's already been a founder, sold their company, getting ready for the next adventure. So um, th these are some, some of my thoughts. But if you think about people that are in the top 5% of the world consistently, they have something in common. Um, and, and let me actually um, guide you through some of these examples. When you think about a professional, think about athletes, think about actors, think about musicians, surgeons, Navy SEALs. Think about astronauts. What they have in common is that they are impatiently patient. And what I, want, what I mean with that is they're impatient in setting goals and getting started. They don't procrastinate and take action. They are then patient in building skill over many, many years. And I meet actually a lot of people who aspire to be entrepreneurs who seem to have this backward. They are patiently impatient. They talk the talk about how they will start developing a skill or start their business once they finish that project or once they found the perfect co-founder or once they've done another master's degree. And once they finally get started, they give up after three months and blame the investors, the economy or their team. So I think it's important to know yourself. And if being a professional founder is not for you, do something else that's more aligned with your signature strength. But once you do decide to become a founder, I think you need to take a 50 year horizon on what that means. You need to ask yourself, what do I need to do to become the best founder I can be during the next 50 years? And what skills do I need to have to maximize the probability of my company succeeding? So what I would like to offer is the perspective um, of, of really looking this over a long period of time. If you think about the best athletes, the best actors, the best surgeons, they have practiced for 10, 20, 30 years before they're at their best. So basically um, moving on, I would like to offer you my perspective and my experience, what I've done in the last six years um, as I joined N26 as one of the first employees, as I joined as an entrepreneur in residence in 2014, up until um, what brings me to today where I'm uh, as chief growth officer responsible for marketing, internationalization, and also the development in our existing, existing markets. I think it's really been an insane learning journey. Um, and uh, I've learned uh, really a huge amount of things. When you think back to, to the skills that I talked about that will at some point potentially determine uh, uh, my success as a founder. So uh, I would like to share with you a couple of, couple of insights. Um, when I joined, I learned how to set up a customer service and operations team from scratch. After being the first person in the team and personally answering customers' emails and phone calls, I quite quickly built up a team of 25 people that you can see on these photos and handed over the team to the customer service professional. I was responsible for the strategic project of N26 obtaining its own banking license and migrating over from our initial partner bank. In that context, I worked with people 20 to 30 years older than me uh, and had to ensure they deliver their parts of the project on time. I was responsible for our international expansion to 24 European markets and built up local teams in our core markets. I've also been responsible for our setup of operations in Brazil, where we're currently in the process of applying for a banking license. I've represented N26 towards regulatory authorities in the UK, Austria, Spain, and Brazil. I've attended more than 50 conferences as a speaker, panelist, or fireside speaker. 
some of which were high profile events such as Money 2020, where I spoke in front of an audience of 600 people. I've been interviewed on TV and I've been interviewed by a team of partners and analysts of the lead venture capital fund that invested 300 million euros uh, into our company regarding our internationalization strategy and efforts. I've been part of the company's leadership team and executive team for almost my entire tenure. And I've interviewed more than a thousand people for various positions. In that context, I've also hired, enabled, managed, and also fired people 15 to 20 years older than me. I've set up three teams from scratch and more recently been asked to merge three teams together following a leadership change and I'm now responsible for over 100 people. I've learned what it means to be responsible for the growth of our organization. Uh, I've learned what it means to be responsible spending double digit million, uh, uh, double digit million euro budgets in marketing. And I'm not, and I'm saying all of that, not to impress you, but to impress upon you that if you treat entrepreneurship as a profession, and you aspire to be a founder, you do not need to start as a founder. So uh, basically, what can you do uh, to summarize the, this talk? Um, to tilt the odds in your favor of actually becoming a successful founder. In other words, what capabilities do you need in order to have a strong understanding of all these entrepreneurial skills, as well as becoming world class in a handful of them? I personally believe it comes down to three things. The first one, is EQ, emotional intelligence, which means knowing and managing yourself, including very honest reflections on your own performance and how the company is doing. I think it comes down to grit, which is a passion and perseverance for long-term goals. And I think it comes down to the willingness and ability to learn very, very fast. So in summary, I wanna leave you with the final thought. Learn to be an entrepreneur so that you are as ready as you can be to become a founder and seize a true opportunity to make a difference. Thank you everyone for your attention and looking forward to answering some questions. Thank you, so essential thing that they're really good at. So how would you say a person could find something um, that he or she is really good at? What would you recommend to a person who's looking for something? I think everyone has things that they're really, really good at. And I think it's really important to um, to have that element of self-reflection, but then also get feedback. So, right. So, ask your friends, ask your ask your family, ask your coworkers. Also, get the opinion of people that are not close to you. Right. Like, I think it's sometimes difficult also to give the honest feedback for someone that you deeply care about. So, make sure you get feedback also from people that have worked with you, but that are not sort of emotionally invested in your success. Um, and by sort of approaching that, I think you can um, you can quite easily figure out what are the things that you're really really good at. Um, and then just really double down on them and see if they make sense in an entrepreneurial context or, or in any other context. Thank you so much for your answer and for participating today. Um, we really enjoyed your talk. And now we are all getting ready for the pitch award, which is coming up next on the startup stage. Thanks a lot. And we'll see each other shortly. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, everyone. And I'm happy to answer any questions. You can uh, connect with me via email or LinkedIn. Uh, happy to take any questions and uh, have a great evening. Ciao. Thank you.